Good day, it's Constantine. In today's video, we are going to look at a side chaining technique using a plugin, the Waves Factory Track Spacer. Now, the traditional way of doing it is via compressor, and it is a must know technique. So, if you want to learn how to do that, you can check the link for the video where I cover side chain compression in Logic Pro. Now, side chain is when you have an effect on a track activated by another audio source. Now, a common example would be the kick and the bass. Whenever the kick hits, the bass ducks down, usually by using a compressor, and then gets back up to its original volume. If done properly, you can't even tell that it ducks. By ducking, I mean the temporarily lowering of volume of the specified audio signal whenever that is triggered from a second audio signal that we set as a trigger. Now, I know it sounds a bit complicated but if you're a beginner, but it's easy to implement it as you will see. Now, what sign chain does is to create space, small holes, so that the instruments that occupy the same frequency rates, range do not fight with each other and they can cut through the mix better. Now, as I said, the traditional way of doing it is by using a compressor. Track Spacer does not use compression though. It uses a 32 EQ band to carve out holes and subtract the frequencies on the channel we inserted. Now it's quite useful as a mixing tool and what I like about it is that unlike the compressor, it doesn't turn down everything, only the frequencies that you choose. Now let's look at some examples. And by far the most well-known one for sidechain technique is with the bass and the kick. You can of course use it on any instrument, including vocals. Now, speaking of which, I remember a cool technique I once saw a mixing engineer do. Just for the chorus, he put a ducker on all of the instruments and sidechained that with the vocals. Now at first I thought that this wouldn't work, but it worked amazingly well. But it was done really well. Minimum amount and it helped bring out the vocals slightly more just for the chorus. And I can't see why this couldn't be done with track space. Now before listening to some examples, let's look at the interface. When you load the plugin, this is what comes up. This is the main window. Now on the top, we get a spectrum analyzer for the incoming signal. And when we set up a side chain, the blue line here will show you the analysis of the side chain signal, and the white line will show you the analysis for the reduction amount. The white line is dependent on the amount knob we would, which we will look at in a bit. If you hover your mouse over the display, it tells you the frequency and dB values. Now, as you can guess, the amount will control the amount of reduction that will be applied to the signal. The higher you crank it, the more reduction you're going to get. And we also get these two very helpful knobs here high cut and a low cut knob. In the example we will look at, we want to side chain the bass to the kick. Both occupy the low end of our track, so we need to focus on those frequencies. There is no point in having the upper frequencies of the kick affecting the bass too. So with these two knobs we control the range. So if I take the uh, low pass filter all the way down, and by low pass I mean the high cut, it's the same thing, you will see that the line will stay up, so if press play as well. So you see that the line stays in the center and the frequencies after that are not being affected. And lastly, on this panel, we also have the freeze option. Essentially, that becomes a EQ when you press free, because when you click on it, the current settings will be held and the reduction will follow that. So let's actually try that. And as you can see, it freezes on that and now it follows just those settings. And the last thing on this page is the logo. If you click on it, a menu appears with some options. Now next, if you click on the little dot on, on the frequency spectrum, the advanced options appear. Now before we look at this, let's get some playback so, and start uh, messing around with the bass so that when we start changing the settings, we can actually hear some difference. Now first things first, where do you put it? You put the plugin to the channel that you want to affect. So if I want to lower the bass and the frequencies on the bass when the kick hits, I put it on the bass as I have done here. On its own, it will do nothing. 
you need to sidechain it. And there are two ways of doing that. So the first, which is easier and faster, is simply to go up here to the sidechain option or the plugins and logic have that. And then click here and sidechain it to whatever you want. So the input for us would be audio and then kick in. So now it is sidechained to the kick. Let's have a listen. Let's unfreeze it as well. Let's solo it so we can have a better listen. Now the second way, and that is the one I use only because that is the same way I do sidechain compression, is via bus. And in this example, it will be a much better option to send our signal to a bus because we can mute the kick drum and listen to the effect it has on the bass. And you know, just by listening to the effect it has on the bass without the kick, it is a good way to understand how it works. Now let's set up a sidechain compression. So we want the kick, I'm going to the sense, I'm going to select, let's go with bus 5, let's press X, X to bring up the mixer. I'm going to click on it, hold down option and set to unity. And let's rename that kick sidechain. And when I press play, you see that the signal goes here, but now we hear the signal for both of these channels. So I don't want that. I'm going to set that to no output. And I'm going to set that to pre-fader. Pre-fader means that my signal is being sent to the aux channel before it hits the channel fader. So I can go ahead and completely mute this channel and the signal will still go to the bus. So. And as you can see, the signal still goes to the bus. So that means we can trigger the effect on the bass even without listening to the trigger or the kick. So let's reopen track space. Let's go to the bass. And let's reset up the side chain. So this time we want the bass and kick in. Now let's let's listen to what we've got without the side chain. Let's put the amount to zero instead of deactivating the plugin. Now this bass is too rock or metal for this kind of sound. And I chose that because it's overwhelming. It will be easier to listen to the difference when you try and tame a more aggressive sound. So let's start working on it and explain things as we go along. So for starters, let's put everything on the default state, which just changed the amount. And let's start with the high cut and the kick. So how much do we take this one down? So let's actually go to the kick, put a plug in here. Let's put an EQ and let's start listening to it. I'd say, so that's the main area where most of the energy of the kick is. So if I actually change that to uh, low pass, All right, so that's most of the energy of the kick up here. And let's change that to a high pass. Let's deactivate that. You will see that this is mostly, you know, the punts of the kick. So I don't want these frequencies to affect the bass, that doesn't bother me. So I want these frequencies to work on the bass. So I'm going to close that, let's go back to track spacer. So I can take that all the way down. That's fine, that's good. And of course we need to just work with the amount as well, because that is too much right now. Now that is a bit of a problem because we need to start working with the release and the attack and that's no problem because when I click on this little dot here it brings up the advanced panel and we need to mess up with the attack and the release. 
So as you can guess from using a compressor, the attack controls how quick the gain reduction will happen, and the release will control how fast the level of reduction is brought up to its original state. So let's play with this a bit. Actually, let's mute the kick. So you can just listen to the bass and the effect it has on it. So the release is too much now, and if I take it all the way up, it will change uh, its tone as well. And with the kick. And in context. So on and off. Yeah, the kick and the bass work much, much better together now. Now let's look at the rest of the settings. Pan controls the panning of the effect. So when we are in left-right mode, we can set the effect to wherever we want. So hard left, let's actually solo these. In mid-side you can set the effect to either the mid-channel or the side. So all the way to the left you are affecting the mid-channel at 100% and all the way to the right you are affecting the sides at 100%. And of course you can choose anything between those, same for the left and right. I know you don't hear much of a panning difference here, and that is because we are just using the mid-channel. Now, mid-side processing is not something we will cover in this video, but I will make a video explaining that because I know it can be somewhat confusing when you start out. So check that out if you want to know more about it. And lastly, let's look at the side chain. Now, when that is activated, you only hear that the side chain signal that is being affected by the low and high cut filters so that you can tune them exactly to where you want them. Now, let's look at it. The only thing in our sidechain pass is the kick. So when I click on that one, we will only hear the kick. Okay, so now listen to the sound of the kick as I'm taking the high cut filter up and down. And if I take the low cut filter up, it will lose the low end and it will focus mostly on the punch of the kick. Now here, since I want to affect just the bass, I will be working with the high cut knob for this example. And But actually, you know, if you're working with different instruments, then definitely engage both knobs to fine tune which frequencies you want to affect. I prefer to do it in context. That's alright. I think it works much, much better right now. The kick and the bass work really well together. Overall, the effect that it has on the main sound of your mix may be small, but that is mixing. Lots of small changes instead of two or three big ones. And you know, little by little, you add to the overall sound. I think that this is an amazing tool for what it does and can definitely help your mix. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that, I don't know if you have seen that, but there is a plugin here on the master channel, an EQ. So a good way to check how the kick and the bass work is by actually putting a high pass filter here, a low pass actually, and listening just for that. So that's the master channel, it's on everything. 
and just focus on the kick and the bass and see how they work together. This obviously won't work if you are on a laptop and let's look at it with the track spacer as well. You can definitely hear the difference. So when track space is enabled, you can see that there is more space for the kick to punch in through the bass. So definitely use that trick to check out if you have done it correctly or, you know, just put on all of your mixes. So that's it for today. Until next time.